Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about Marie Antoinette's morning routine. And I've always been such a huge fan of Marie Antoinette. I love the movie with Kirsten Dunst and I just love the kind of fantasy element of Marie Antoinette. And I just find her very fascinating. So make sure you check out my other Marie Antoinette videos as well. So let's jump right in and kind of go through all the steps she went through for her morning routine. So between 9 and 10 every morning, Marie Antoinette would rise and take a bath. The French saw her habitual washing as an infection as some of them went many days, sometimes even weeks, without fully submerging themselves in water. So back then, most people wouldn't really bathe at all and they would just cover themselves with a ton of perfume and a body powder. And the idea of submerging themselves into water was a revolting idea considering that the elaborate poofs of the era required much pomade and false hair pieces that would often be worn for long stretches of time, attracting fleas and lice, especially in the long wigs like I'm wearing. After Marie Antoinette's bath, she was dressed informally for her morning activities. And this was a crucial part of the system of etiquette at Versailles, along with couture to go to bed at the end of the day. Everything had to be presented to Marie Antoinette during these ceremonies. She could reach for nothing herself. This process served the dual function of reinforcing the image of the semi-divine status of the royal family while putting their courtiers in their places. They also had another unforeseen effect of creating rivalries and establishing a pecking order among the nobles and attendants. On one noted occasion, Marie Antoinette, shivering in her state of undress, was kept waiting for her clothing while a series of consecutively higher-ranking ladies entered the room, vying for the honor of handing the Dufon her underwear. And I remember different scenes in the movie Marie Antoinette where it showed her standing there in just her like gauze gown waiting for everyone to come in and dress her, so it seemed like it was quite the event. After she was suitably attired, Marie Antoinette typically attended her morning prayers then ate breakfast. She was also known to be a light eater, so her meal usually consisted of a cup of hot chocolate and a breakfast roll. During these informal times, she could receive her husband's younger sisters, who were nine and six respectively, thus unbound to the rules of etiquette. In the mid-morning, Marie Antoinette paid a brief visit to Mesdames Tantes, her husband's unwed aunts, in their apartments. Sometimes the king would join them if he happened to be in residence. After she returned to her rooms to have her hair styled before chamber was called at noon. And this was the procedure during which she donned her official court dress for the day. In a letter to her mother, Marie Antoinette writes, At 11 o'clock I have my hair done. At noon all the world can enter. I put on my rouge and wash my hands in front of the whole world. Then the gentlemen leave and the ladies remain. When she was properly attired, she attended Mass, and then the spectacle would begin anew at the royal family's afternoon meal, Grand Covert. These everyday functions, usually performed behind closed doors, became a public exhibition. Anybody inclined to come and watch the royals could do so as long as they were suitably dressed, and if not, they could rent items at the gate. As a result, the palace was thronged with spectators on a regular basis, hoping to catch a glimpse of how the other half lived. For Marie Antoinette's husband, who had been born at Versailles and knew nothing else, the circus was unremarkable, but to her, these procedures were so distressing that she ate very little, if anything at all. After dining, she and her husband would visit for an hour or so before she returned to the apartments of the spinster aunts. Then she would make her confession to Abbe de Vermont, who would then release her to go to her music lessons, a passion of hers since childhood. And then she would have one final visit from the aunts and the remainder of the evening would be spent doing quiet activities of her choice, walking in the manicured gardens, playing cards, or perhaps embroidering handkerchiefs or some special item. To the end of her day, Marie Antoinette would go through this process at bedtime as well, which was 11 o'clock at night. And of course, at the beginning of their marriage, all of France was constantly waiting for the consummation of their marriage, but after a few months, things relaxed and the king would return to his own bed to sleep, which was typical for the French court. The actual deed would not be accomplished for seven years. Later on, Marie Antoinette had a rebellious streak, sneaking out to attend mass balls, hosting all-night gambling parties, and flouting the stuffy etiquette of decaying regime at Versailles. 
but in her early years she was docile and eager to please, knowing that any misstep would be reported to her mother, the Holy Roman Empress, the person she wished to please above all others. Living her life under such constant scrutiny was a heavy burden to Marie Antoinette, and when her husband was crowned in 1775 and gifted her La Petite Trianon, it became her private sanctuary and escape from the public madness. And I found another broken down list of Marie Antoinette's daily schedule and what life was like at Versailles. So 8 a.m. the Queen wakes. A woman of the wardrobe arrives carrying a basket with what are called offerings. Offerings include two or three chemises, some handkerchiefs, and some towels. First waiting woman arrives and presents a book known as Gazette des Atours, which contains fabric swatches of gowns. Each season has 12 toilets, 12 demi-toilets, and 12 rich dresses with panniers. The queen selects the garments she will wear for the day by marking the swatches with pins. Her selections are delivered in large taffeta baskets and include a full dress, an undress for the afternoon, and an evening dress for the play and supper. The queen then wraps herself in a long robe of English flannel that is buttoned to the bottom. The bath is rolled in and bathers arrive with bathing items. When the queen finishes her bath, a bath sheet is held to shield her from the prying eyes and allows her to dry off in privacy. She returns to bed wearing a white taffeta cloak and has either a piece of embroidery to work on or a book to read. At 10 a.m., the queen visits the king's aunts and then the king. At 11 a.m., the queen's hair is dressed and the king's brothers usually arrive. Styles often include creations created by the queen herself. And at noon, the grand toilette then begins and folding chairs placed in a circle for the superintendent of the household. Ladies of honor, ladies of the bedchamber, and children's governess. Prince of the blood, captains of the guard, and all the high officials who come to pay court. Ladies of the palace arrive after the toilette is complete. The queen acknowledges each individual by a slight nod of her head. The toilette table is very elaborate and placed in the center of the room. Getting ready for the day includes cleansing her skin with cosmetics, using astrogens, and adding a whitener. White paint is then applied and dusted with a scented powder, rouge reddens her cheeks, and pomade glosses her lips. Because the queen suffered from smallpox as a child, she sometimes adds the ever popular mouches, and these are a little birthmarks that you can add in the shapes of like stars and hearts, which was very common during this time period to cover small pox scars. And the finishing touch is one of the queen's favorite scents, which is usually an orange blossom perfume that she wears regularly. And I also have another perfume called Black Jade, which was created by an old recipe that Marie Antoinette loved. And I really like this one. It was created, I believe, in the early 2000s, and I'll link that below. And there is a specific protocol enacted for dressing the queen. The lady of honor handed her chemise and poured the water for her to wash her hands. The lady of the bedchamber passed the shirt of her gown in her full dress, arranged her fichu, and clasped her necklace. Moreover, nothing was passed to the queen directly. If the queen wanted a glass of water, it happened in this order. And her bedtime routine was very similar to her morning routine. And this happened at 11 o'clock where all her nightgowns and nightcaps were brought to her in a basket. In addition, the stockings for the next morning were also delivered. After dressing for bed, she put on gloves filled with wax to moisturize her hands. So I always like to sometimes have little moments where I pretend to be, not necessarily be Marie Antoinette, but just to kind of have a feminine, decadent day to myself. And I like to do this by sipping her favorite tea, and that that's Nina and Paris's Marie Antoinette tea, and it has all the flowers from Versailles. And I also have my Marie Catoinette teapot, which I use for the tea. And then I like to spray my favorite perfume, and then I also like to like surround myself in roses and buy fresh flowers for myself. And then I also like to indulge in croissants or cupcakes, just something fun. And if I want to take things to the next level, I like to use products from LBCC Apothecary. And they have the historically accurate white face paint, which is kind of fun. And then you can also get the rouge for your cheeks. And then they also have the perfumed dusting powder. And all these recipes are historically accurate from that time, which is really fun. And that's why I like them. 
And I just like to, I don't know, it's just fun to kind of surround yourself in beautiful feminine things. I even have sleeping gloves filled with wax that I use sometimes. And then obviously I have this wig. I know it's not historically accurate, but it's just fun to put it on for my Marie Antoinette videos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the big red button below. And I also have a YouTube membership and with this membership you get three bonus videos a month plus one monthly bonus live stream. And you also get 20% off Vintage Doll Cosmetics, my vintage inspired beauty brand, and everything is linked below. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.